Hello everyone, and welcome back. I had a request in the comments to go over adaptive layer height, why it's there, its uses, and how to apply it to your projects. This video will be separated into parts so you can go to these time markers if anything I say is already known to you. First, let's go over layer height in general. If you are running a stock Bamboo Lab printer, you're probably on a 0.4 millimeter nozzle running at a 0.2 millimeter layer height. So on that 0.4 millimeter nozzle, your default layer heights are 0.28 millimeter extra draft, 0.24 millimeter draft, 0.2 millimeter or 0.20 millimeter standard, 0.16 millimeter optimal, 0.12 millimeter fine, and 0.08 millimeter extra fine. This means every layer that is laid down is 0.2 millimeters high. Typically, higher numbers of layers basically means lower details, and lower layer number means higher, the, higher details. Smaller nozzles like a 0.2 millimeter can go even lower. This is beyond the scope of this video, but you can make other adjustments, but you may introduce print errors, globs, stringing, so we're just going to stick with stock settings. So you may ask yourself, why not set the best quality and do extra fine all the time? The biggest reason not to set the layer height too low is time. There can be a huge increase in time if you set the layers too low. There are also instances where you will see very little benefit setting the layer height too low, uh, especially on things like flat tops. So when you are setting your layer height, it's a balancing act of low enough layer height for detail and speed, but not too low to have crazy print times. Here are some examples of a 30 millimeter cube. Uh, at 0.28 millimeters, it's about 12 minutes, 0.24, 13 minutes, uh, 0.2, 15 minutes, uh, 0.16, 18 minutes, 0.12, 23 and a half minutes, and a 0.08, 34 minutes. And you can also see a slight difference in terms of the amount of filament used. Typically, when you do set a layer height in the global setting, it applies to the whole model. So you may have a part that does not need to be as detailed in all places. Adaptive layer height is a way to have the best of both worlds. You can select parts of the model that have a higher layer height for faster prints and sections with lower layer height for higher detail. Also, if you've ever seen or printed a model with a rounded top, uh, the layer height issue becomes more prominent. For instance, rounded tops experience stair stepping where there isn't enough detail to make a smooth transition between the layers. There's a sharp step at each layer. Okay, so let's look at some of these half spheres. Um, so each of these will actually be a different layer height. So from um, 0.28, 24, 2, 16, 12, and 8. Now, if I were to slice this, if we look at the tops of these, you'll see those um, that stair stepping and as the layer heights get lower, um, you, they'll be less prominent. And we'll switch over to layer height to get a better idea. Uh, so again, 2.8 all the way down to 2.0, then 16 all the way down to 0.8. So I'll show you how to apply the adaptive layer height. So we're gonna go over here now this particular one is set to a 0.2 layer height. And in order to enable the adaptive layer height, once you've selected your model, you'll just go right up to here into the variable layer height. Now you will see a few things. Um, before I actually start clicking anything over here, this line will represent the layer height that the entire model's at. So this whole section here is considered 0.2. Uh, also, when you are running your mouse cursor over this, you'll actually see that, um, that yellow band go around so you know exactly where you're at. Now, before I start clicking on any buttons, if you um, don't refer to my channel and you just want to see the uh, instructions, um, the left mouse button will add detail, 
uh, the mouse wheel will increase the edit area. Um, the right mouse button will remove detail. Uh, you can basically hold shift le left um, mouse button to reset the base and the shift right button to smooth. Now, if you don't know what you're doing, <laughs> you could just um, select this little slider here and hit adaptive and it will try to figure out uh, roughly what's considered the best. So it will start with a, um, since this is a balance, it'll start at a larger layer height and progressively get smaller. So if you look over here, as you move your mouse cursor over, starting at about a 0.28, it will start to um, go down at the different layers. So again, you can look over on the left and it starts to get uh, progressively better, lowering the height until it gets to its lowest height, which is a 0.28, oh, sorry, 0.08. Um, you can do this manually, so I'm gonna hit reset. So any part of this, you can just move your mouse cursor here. When you left click, you can decide how much detail you want. Now, again, as you do this, you're just adding more time and for the lower base, it may not be a big deal, but as you get higher, you'll want more detail. The, let's reset again. Also, you can lower your quality um, to, let's do a 0.8. You won't be able to go to a zero, so there will be a limit to how uh, far you can take this. But 0 0.08 for a point, um, four millimeter nozzle will be your lowest. Uh, let's actually reset again. Uh, now, if you do that automatic one, so let's say you wanted a, um, you just uh, clicked adaptive and it tried to figure out uh, starting at a 0.2 all the way down to um, the 0 0.08, um, you might actually have like a jarring uh, uh, section where you can sort of tell that the lower, uh, layer height lowered if you were to click on the smooth radius or just click on this, it will start to uh, smooth out this entire uh, section. Um, what this will do is this will smooth out uh, up to 10 of these little tick marks here. So if I were to just leave it on one and as I keep tapping smooth, I don't know if you can see it actually, let me just do 10 so you can see it a little easier. It actually starts to smooth out the sections. Actually, let's do something that isn't so low. So adaptive, and I'm gonna keep hitting smooth. You'll start to see about 10 of these little tick marks smooth at a time. If I knock it down to one, I know it's hard to see from over here, so I'm gonna keep resetting it so you can see a little easier. Let's put this back to 50. So we'll see prominent changes. So let's do a quick adaptive and I'm just going to keep tapping the smooth and each of these sections, in this case, six of these sections will start to smooth out. So you'll sort of see a smooth transition uh, between the larger layer heights all the way down to the lower layer heights. And if you are using the keep minimum, um, anytime you go below uh, this section here, into the green, uh, it means that that particular one will actually stay. So um, if I hit adaptive, I hit keep minimum, this part will stay while this part will start to change. So if I keep tapping that smooth, you'll have sort of like an even transition from uh, the larger layer heights all the way down to the smaller layer heights. So technically you should get more detail uh, at the expense of more time. If you are using a smaller nozzle height, uh, sorry, smaller nozzle, um, you can go even lower in terms of layer height. So if you were to just uh, swap your nozzle down to a small one, and if we do the same thing, if I were to just hit uh, adaptive, uh, it can go down uh, really low to 0 0.04. So sort of as a recap, um, depending on what nozzle size you have, if you're going by default settings, you can manually select um, a part of your model and you can lower its layer height uh, to essentially give you more detail to reduce that stair stepping. Um, and if you needed to increase, and this is left click, increase the layer height, you can just right click on a section 
and you can make your layer height um, effectively larger uh, to give you a, more, uh, a faster print time. Uh, and if you hit the smooth section, what it will do is it will try to have an, a smooth transition from the larger to the smaller. And if you were to uh, change this part here, when you tap smooth, uh, it's pretty much how many of these little ticks get changed. So if you were to set this down to one and you keep tapping it, you'll uh, usually straighten this out or at least have that smooth transition one tick at a time. If you make it larger, it's about 10. So between one and 10. So if I have this model here and if I were to slice, we can see um, usually any curves or circular um, sections that stair stepping. And uh, right now we're at uh, 947 layers. If I were to go to our variable layer height, I don't have to do the whole model. I can actually just go to the part that needs it and I can lower that layer height to hopefully reduce the stair stepping at the end. You'll still get it, uh, get, still get some of it, uh, but you should be able to reduce it. So we'll go back to slicing. And we'll see that we've added a few more layers at the top since it has to make them a little smaller. And it would have reduced a bit of that stair stepping at the top. And because I was curious, I decided to uh, slice this at a uh, 0 0.08 uh, layer height. And it will take, instead of about five hours for this print, uh, a little over 11 hours. So you can see the difference of just making um, a small adjustment where you need it instead of running the entire model with one layer height. And I'll leave a shortcut to the Bamboo Lab um, wiki so you can uh, see how all this plays out and then probably have a much better explanation than what I just gave. Um, but it explains essentially the, uh, the stair steps or what they call the ladder um, layer heights and the like. And of course, if you have any questions, you can leave them down in the comments. I'll print off one of these. I usually actually have a copy of that one already with the, just the top of it um, adjusted. Thank you very much for watching, and if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments.